everybody this is example number eight in the structural dynamics section for this uh, our problem statement is for the steel shear frame structure determine the natural circular frequency the natural frequency and the period of vibrations for oscillation in the horizontal direction the horizontal girder supports a dead weight of 30 kips which is uniformly distributed along its length Assume that the horizontal girder to be infinitely rigid with respect to the columns and neglect the mass of the columns that bend about their strong axis. So here's our structure. We have three columns. Two columns, two, the outer columns are W8 by 24. And they have a length of 10 feet. And the middle column is W10 by 33. And it has a length of 10 plus 5, 15 feet. And, and the outer columns, the W8 by 24, they're pinned. Pin boundary condition. Pinned. And the W10 by 33 is a fixed boundary condition. And these three columns are supporting a horizontal girder which has a, which has a distributed long load along its length of 30 kips and it's assumed to be rigid so the first thing we'll do is uh, get the section properties for each column type we have two types of columns w8 by 24 and w10 by 33 so we need to get the second moment of inertia which will later be used in the stiffness calculations so the second moment of inertia of w8 by 24 is equal to 82.8 inches to the fourth power and for W10 by 33 it's equal to 170 inches to the fourth power and the Young's modulus of steel is equal to 29,000 KSI next we'll calculate the individual transverse stiffnesses for each column type so first we'll, t we'll consider the W8 by 24 columns. And so the st uh, transverse stiffness term for a pinned column, such as the W8 by 24, is 3 times EI divided by L cubed. And then we multiply by 2 since there are two columns that are W8 by 24. So we just plug in the numbers. 3 times 29,000 KSI times 82.8 inches to the fourth power multiply by 2 which is the number of columns number of W8 by 24 columns and we divide it by L cubed which is 10 feet times 12 in to get it into inches we multiply it by 12 and we cube that whole value so this gives us the, the stiffness for the W8 by 24 columns, two of them, 8.3375 kips per inch. Next, we'll calculate the transverse stiffness for the W10 by 33 column. And, and um, for the W10 by 33 column, the stiffness term is different from that of the W8 by 24 because the boundary condition is different. The W8 by 24 was pinned, were pinned. And W10 by 33, it's fixed. So a fixed uh, boundary condition um, naturally will have a higher stiffness. And this is a term, 12 times EI divided by L cubed. So we just plug in the numbers, 12 times 29,000 KSI times 170 inches to the fourth power. And we divide it by... Uh, the length. Also, the length is also different for e these columns. The W8 by 24 columns are 10 feet, and the W10 by 33 column is 15 feet. And then we convert it into inches by multiplying by 12 and cubing that value. So the so the st transverse stiffness for the middle W10 by 33 column is 10.1 10 10.1440 kips per inch. So once we have the individual stiffnesses, we need to calculate the equivalent stiffness. So these three columns represent springs in parallel. So to calculate the equivalent stiffness, we simply just 
uh, do the summation. We just add the individual stiffnesses up. So these are parallel springs. It represents the three columns are represent parallel springs. So we just add K1, which is W8 by 24 stiffness, plus K2, which is a W10 by 33 stiffness. So 8.3375 plus 10.1440 kips per inch. It gives us an equivalent stiffness of 18.4815 kips per inch. Next, we'll calculate the mass, uh, which refers to the which pertains to the mass that the girder is supporting, that the columns are supporting, that distributed weight, which is 30 kips, which is on the girder. So we just convert that into the mass. So 30 kips divided by the gravitational acceleration, which is 32.2 feet per second, and then we multiply by 12 to get it into inches. So we have a mass of 0, 0.0. 776 kips second squared per inch. Once we have the equivalent stiffness and the mass, we can calculate the natural circular frequency, omega, which is simply the square root of the equivalent stiffness divided by the mass. So just plug in the numbers 18.4815 divided by 0 0.0776, take the square root, and so the natural circular frequency is equal to 15.4286 radians per second. Next, we'll calculate the natural frequency, which is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. So omega is 15.4286, which we just calculated above. Divide that by 2 pi, and this gives us a natural frequency of 2.4555 hertz. And finally, we'll calculate the natural period, which is the inverse of the natural frequency. So T period equals 1 divided by the natural frequency. So 1 divided by 2.4555 hertz. And this gives us a natural period of 0 0.407 seconds. And this is the end of example number 8. Thanks.